and welcome to another AIC Productions video. Um, and I am here with another $200 laptop. Um, this case, it's an HP laptop that I picked up just recently. And it was $200, $200 even uh, for this laptop. And it is an HP notebook. It's not a Pavilion or any other name brands. It is called a notebook. And I looked for it, and this is a brand new computer, brand new model. But it's not something that's readily available on their website. I only found it through select re retailers in this case. I bought it on Amazon. And it definitely is targeting very much a low-end segment, a low-end market. Um, just like the other $200 laptops I've purchased. Um, just to go over the, some of the other laptops, um, the Asus um, X205A. Um, the Dell 11 inch that I had, the, um, the Dell with uh, with the Pentium processor with the 14 inch screen. Um, all of them in some ways are very similar and other ways very different. Um, so I wanted to go over some of the similarities. And with this laptop, um, I'll be honest, there's not a lot of similarities. First of all, it's a smaller screen. It's a 14 inch screen. Um, it uh, only has... Um, 32 gigs of storage um, and that's really about where the similarities end. Um, the Asus with the uh, Atom processor and the Dell with Celeron processor they both have the um, 32 gigs of memory. Um, now one thing where this laptop differs in a big way from those other machines is that this does not have an Intel processor. In fact, it has an AMD APU. Now, what an APU is, and as about as simple as I can put it, a more powerful process, uh, graphics processing chip combined with the CPU. And that, that's pretty important on this laptop, and I'll go over that here in a little bit. Um, but it's really to allow for better graphics than what you would find with a similar class of CPU with Intel. So why would you want something to have a little bit better graphics in this price point? Because obviously this is no gaming laptop. You're not going to play the latest AAAs on a $200 laptop. I hate to break it to you, it just isn't going to happen. You're going to be spending five, six, seven, two, three thousand dollars on a laptop that will play those AAA titles. The biggest reason for wanting a computer like this with that a little bit better graphics card is that right there, the screen. Unlike all the other laptops I've reviewed recently, this laptop does not have a uh, 1366 by 768 screen. It has a 1920 by 1080. So this is a full HD screen on a $200 laptop. Now, to put that in perspective, and I'm going off of 14 inch computers because um, to me, when you're buying a budget computer, 14 inches is kind of where it's at as far as the price goes. Um, the next cheapest 14 inch computer I could find with a 1080 screen was this exact computer but with an Intel processor with the Celeron and it was $70 more more for the Celeron processor. The next cheapest was $450. So I could buy this computer more than two times for the price of the next cheapest computer. And it still only had a, um, a Core i3, which is a better processor, but not by much. Now, one thing I have had um, a lot of computers. I've, I, I work in IT. I um, work with companies' computers, the companies I work for, doing computer repair, deploying new hardware, um, upgrading computers, things like that. And I have seen a lot of five, six, seven hundred dollar machines that do not have 
as nice a screen as this $200 computer. I am incredibly impressed by its quality. Now it's not perfect. And the viewing angles on it are great. They're, they're stellar. But it doesn't quite get bright enough. And I think it has, even though I couldn't find anywhere in the spec sheet for it, it's got to have some sort of um, auto dim for the screen. Because it definitely dims a little bit when I unplug the power. Even though I'm at 100% um, brightness, it definitely dims when I unplug the power. And it dims slightly when it's darker in the room. I've noticed that it's not a huge difference, but there's definitely something in there um, for it. So, and it definitely drives the screen well. Um, obviously, I'm not testing it with the Celeron processor. Um, I didn't want to spend another two hundred and seventy dollars. I'm, I'm very happy with this machine. Um, and it works really well. Um, and the things that I, I use this type of machine for, um, typing, video streaming, um, some light gaming with Minecraft, a few other things, it works really good with those systems on this screen. It looks good. Another difference, and this might be why some of those other things work better, is this does have 4 gigs of RAM with the Celeron and the Atom based systems that only have the two gigs um, I kept running into a problem where just running the OS takes almost a full gig you have any other background processes running you know they take another half half a gig and all of a sudden you don't have enough memory to load more than you know, a couple of web pages and even then it's a bit iffy so that four gigs of memory is huge and on these other systems it's not upgradable I'll go over that a little bit with this machine here. Um, another thing I really like about this computer is the sound quality. The speakers are here along this uh, front edge. Um, they're kind of downward firing. Um, it's over here in this corner. And on this side, it's right here where this grill is. Come on camera, I'll let it you to focus. There we go, so where those grills are. So they're kind of downward facing, which I normally don't like. But I don't think that's a detriment on this computer. Um, at least it didn't seem like it. The speakers get plenty loud. They keep a nice, clear quality of um, sound, even with it turned up all the way. Um, which is something that these other laptops that I've tested simply have not been able to do. The uh, Lenovo, even the Lenovo IdeaPad with the Core i3 that I've tested, its sound quality was pretty piss poor. Um, especially when you turned it up to higher um, volumes. It, it just, it crackled. Um, it didn't hold a very good to tone to it. Um, sound very tinny. And got real washed out at higher volumes. And at lower volumes, you couldn't, couldn't hardly hear it. Now, this laptop is not perfect. Um, one of the first things is, is the touchpad. Um, I do like touch pads that have physical um, right and left click, which so I do appreciate that. But the rest of the touch pad, it's kind of, it, there's not a lot of definition, especially going forward. Um, it kind of bumps down towards the keys a little bit there. And once you get to that bump down, which you barely feel with your finger, you can see it more than you can feel it, um, you no longer have touch pads. So, um, and there's not a lot of definition between the sides, so um, the touchpad ends before you actually get to this ridge here. Um, and so a uh, touchpad is just kind of meh. Now I usually use an external mouse on these, um, so that's not a huge deal breaker for me, um, especially on only a $200 laptop. But on my Atom processor based system, the Asus, where the touchpad is so good, um, it's a little bit disappointing. Um, so I, w I wish it was a better, better touchpad there and it's not even the sensitivity of it it's just the overall design that there just isn't enough definition of the touchpad as well as there's um you on all my other hps even a lot of my other computers um there's been a key somewhere 
either on the touchpad itself or somewhere else that actually shut off the touchpad. So if you're doing a lot of typing, you can shut it off so you don't actually bump it. I have not been able to find that anywhere on this system. So uh, that's something I would have liked as well as just the ability to turn off the touchpad while you're typing. Because I have noticed every now and then I will bump um, the touchpad while I'm typing. In fact, I wrote kind of an outline for this review on this computer. Um, the keyboard's pretty good, especially for this price range. It's, it's okay, not a lot of flex. Uh, feedback and travel's um, reasonably decent. Um, but the touchpad, I, ca I kept bumping it um, when I was typing, and it was a little annoying. Um, another big one for me, so on these computers I only have uh, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, excuse me, of storage, um, you're able to expend, uh, extend their storage by throwing in uh, an SD card. So if you look here on the ASUS, if my camera will focus, right here I have a 128 gig SD card that I threw in the side of the computer um, to put uh, all my larger files and, and other storage on and install um, a lot of the apps that don't require as much performance on uh, to that SD card. This uh, HP has an SD card, it's a full-size SD card. Let me grab one here. Go ahead and stick it in for you. It goes right here in the front. And it sticks out. So you can't leave it in there. You're going to bump it and you're going to damage it. And that's not acceptable to me. Um, you need to be able to expand the storage on this laptop. Uh, and this is not the way to do it on this particular laptop. Now I will go over that here at the end of this video. Because there is a way. I found a way. Not the most elegant of solutions, but it is a possible solution. So, and if there wasn't that solution though, that this computer would have probably been um, pull off my list. Um, I looked into USB drives, but even my smallest, most skinniest, tiniest USB drive just stuck out too far for me to comfortably leave in the uh, side of the laptop, um, much less the uh, SD card. Another thing I don't, not huge on with this laptop, but now that I've found out a little bit more about it, I'm not so unhappy with. It's definitely a lot thicker and heavier than uh, my other laptops. Just a comparison, here's the ASUS. Now the ASUS does have a case on it, so it's thicker, but you see the, uh, the HP is a lot thicker than the ASUS. It's also a lot heavier. Now obviously it has a bigger screen, but it's even heavier for having a 14 inch screen. Um, it's nearly as heavy as my HP ZBook, which has dedicated a video card and all this other jazz. Um, so it, it, it's not uh, uh, as thin and light as most computers are in this price range. Again, I'll go over that here in a little bit of why at first that was a problem, not such a problem anymore. Uh, another thing is, is it is actively cooled. You saw here on the side there's some uh, some vent fans. Um, the fan on it, I never noticed got loud. In fact, I barely can hear it at all. The biggest reason why I know it's even on is because if I put my hand next to it, I can feel some slightly warmed air um, being blown onto my hand. Um, I did a complete benchmark test and a 3D graphics um, test on this machine. Um, and it never felt warm. Top, bottom, side, all around, even the air coming out of the, the vents, never felt hot. Um, obviously, it was slightly warmed, but very comfortable to use. Wasn't a problem at all. Um, so, I wouldn't... Normally with these, they, they have to vent them because they get hot. This one, I'm not quite sure why they did, except for, again, I'll go into that here in a minute. Um, and I Sorry to put some things off, but um, there's some really exciting things about this laptop that I want to cover. And I kind of want to cover all them all at the same time. So, uh, why did I buy this laptop? Besides to do a review on it. Now, again, I bought this laptop with my own money. I paid for it out of my own pocket. 
Um, I'm not sponsored by HP. Now, if HP wants to get in touch with me and sponsor me, I'd love it. But this laptop, <laughs> I did buy with my own money. Um, I work in IT, and I love virtual PCs. What a virtual PC is, is it's a, a virtual computer that you can remote into to do your work, as if you're on your work system. The company I work for had that up until recently, and they recently shut off that environment, uh, which I find to be extremely unfortunate. So now, if I work remotely, I have two options. I can either carry around my work laptop, which is ancient, weighs about 10 pounds, um, has a terrible screen resolution, has no battery life, is extremely slow, um, has a hard drive that's dying. It's just a really bad computer, but they won't refresh it for me. Um, and it has an 8, excuse me, a 1280 by 720 resolution. Like, it, its resolution is just terrible. Um, or, I can have my second option is I can have a squeaky clean computer that has nothing personal on it and use that to remote into work through a VPN. Now why do I want squeaky clean? Because my company scans everything that connects to the VPN so I don't want anything personal on it. So I don't want to be using my daily driver computer when I remote into work. I have pictures of my kids on there. I have my iTunes library. I have my tax documents on there. I have uh, copies of birth certificates, everything you probably shouldn't have on a computer, I have on there because I need it to use every single day and I need access to those um, those documents. Um, I have it, my password saved on there and I just don't want my work to have any access to that at all. So I do have some things installed on this computer. I've not connected it to my work yet. I just put them on here for testing. As soon as I'm done testing, I'm going to be wiping it clean getting it set up for work. So, um, I think I'm going to be very happy using this computer because this resolution, um, I know I keep going back to that, but when you have to have multiple applications open at the same time, when you have to have um, email and, and a chat window and, and I work in virtualization, so I have VM, VMware up and I have um, some Excel documents I have to constantly swap between and the more pixels I can have on a screen the better um, now I'm not gonna spend a thousand dollars plus on a 4k laptop I just I, I'm not gonna do that um, but on something like this this I have found personal experience personal opinion to be about perfect when it comes to um, a computer resolution so Again, as I said earlier, this is not a computer you're going to be playing AAA games on. But what are you going to do with it? Can you play Minecraft? Kind of. You can kind of play it. Um, drop some of the settings down and then it's playable. Um, can you play some Steam games on it? Absolutely. You got some older Steam games. Um, I play uh, Portal 2. I play some uh, old Star Wars games on there. Love them. Uh, great time wasters perfect on this computer because they don't require a lot of compute they don't require a lot of graphics for today's um, graphics and so they work great on something like this um, it's perfect for uh, streaming media streaming music streaming video um, you know if you're a Netflix or an Amazon subscriber perfect it is awesome for that sort of thing um, it connects to um, wire uh, wireless AC um, it connects to wireless N so it has both the 2.5 and the 5 gigahertz built-in which some of these laptops do, haven't had they haven't had both um, you need to do a lot of typing you need to check email you need to spend a lot of time on the internet I can't think of a better computer at this price point um, it is awesome for that the, the CPU you can tax it you can max it out um, but you'd have to be trying. You'd have to be putting in an effort. Um, and it does all the things it's meant to do swimmingly. It does it great. Um, 
Now, I wanted to go over um, just some things when I first uh, got it and was doing some initial testing. I had a uh, results from the 3D Mark. Now, this score, the 1586, is in line with the Celeron uh, and Pentium processors. So within a couple points either way. Um, so these synthetic benchmarks are not perfect. Um, I felt overall use on this was way better than the Celeron. Um, pretty comparable to the Pentium uh, Dell that I had. But the Pentium, it's funny, I bought it for about 225 250 and since then, it's actually gone up in price significantly. Um, it's hard to find under $400 now. So um, I, I can't really compare it against that too much because that computer is now more expensive than this computer. Um, I took some uh, screenshots of a couple of things here too. So one thing with these computers is uh, with that 32 gigs of storage, man out of the box they consume a lot of it and you install a couple of apps on there and it really eats it up big time and one of the things that eats it up is all the bloatware you get on the computer and HP is pretty bad about it not this actually was for an HP was not bad um, just had some of their HP support software is a terrible antivirus um, McAfee um, I didn't uh, and I uninstall all that, including the uh, um, Microsoft 365. So I kept putting off some stuff about it. And if you saw one of my previous videos, you're probably already aware of this. Um, this laptop doesn't just have the 32 gigs of storage anymore. I now have an additional 500 gig hard drive in here. And this is why I say this is probably one of the best value computers um, at this price point. In addition to the 1080 screen, the system board and probably even the chassis are meant for a slightly different machine. It's pretty obvious because when I opened it up there's two big things in here. This came with four gigs of memory. That four gigs is a one four gig stick and there's a second slot. So this laptop can be upgraded to 16 gigs of memory easy. I'll have to do some research, but it could be upgradable to 32 gigs. Now, I'm not going to spend the money to upgrade it to 32 gigs. I had two 8 gig sticks. I put them in. Worked flawlessly. Um, took them out because they're for a different computer. And put the 4 gigs back in because I just I don't need that much RAM in this particular machine. Um, I may still get around to upgrading it to 8 gigs down the road, but as of right now, I know I can. The other thing is, is this computer had um, the connector for a CD-ROM. And what I've done is I bought one of these hard drive caddies, and I'll include a short video that I recorded um, earlier today um, of, of actually showing um, the, the guts. So if you're like, oh, he's not showing us the internals, I'll, I'll show you that here um, at the end of this video. I'll, I'll append that other video I took. And I just took apart the hard drive caddy because um, a CD-ROM, the connectors, the power connector is a lot shorter. And so it has to be broken out. And so this caddy um, plugs into the CD-ROM side there and the hard drive side here. And this uh, about six screws took it apart and that adapter plugged in perfect um, plugged in the hard drive perfect uh, I did have to use um, a couple of velcro dots to because it sat at a funny angle I needed to secure it so I use velcro dots to secure it into place works perfectly and so now I have um, the 500 gig drive on here so I can after I reformat the system, when I install apps to it, I can install all the data, I can install all the apps, I can have it automatically put things to that 500 gig drive, 
instead of having them stored on the 32 gig drive. Um, and that's um, that's awesome. That's amazing because um, it just makes this computer that much more functional for me. Um, I don't have to install a ton of apps for work, but some of them are pretty hefty um, in their size. And I have to work on a lot of um, diagrams. I have to work on a lot of documents that are um, pretty sizable. And I work remotely a lot. And it's kind of a pain trying to work on those documents over the network because I'm working from home. I have to VPN to work. And if there's any kind of latency or, or lag or anything, um, working on those documents can be a pain. So it gives me a place to save those locally while I work on them to then upload. And it gives me a chance to test this out more down the road if I want to do some video encoding. That 32 gigs wasn't enough to put any videos on here. Now I can use that extra hard drive, which I'm stoked for. And it's a lot faster than the SD card or USB drive um, as far as the read write speeds. Um, so anyways, I know this video has gone, gone kind of long. I'm, part of that's just because I'm so excited about this computer um, of the computers I bought recently. I've had this one now for not quite a week and I've spent a lot of time with it, um, much to the annoyance of my wife, uh, messing around with it and playing with it and that's sat open while I waited for that uh, hard drive caddy to be delivered. Um, as far as overall aesthetics on it, um, it's got this kind of ribbed, uh, for her pleasure, uh, uh, top. It's silver. It's plastic. This is just a sea of plastic. It's a $200 computer. I mean, it's not going for super um, design aesthetics. It has a removable ba battery. That is one nice thing um, with these systems. Um, with, like, the Asus, it, its battery will last eight, nine hours, 10 hours, 12 hours if you put it on low power settings and power saver. I mean, this thing will last you um, a solid two days of, of, of normal amounts of work and usage. Um, if you have it go to sleep when you're not using it, things like that. Um, this laptop, um, playing around, I've gotten a good solid with the brightness turned up all the way and, and, and uh, doing the, when I was doing the 3D test, I got a solid two and a half, almost three hours out of it. Um, but that that was maxing out CPU and the graphics, um, 100% uh, for that entire time, and you know consuming all the memory as well, and, and a lot of hard, um, hard drive uh, activity. Um, on normal use, I could see getting um, four to five hours out of this laptop pretty easily if you're willing to dim the screen a little bit and put it into a um, you know, more of a balanced or battery saver mode. Um, I definitely could see uh, getting a, a lot better battery out of it. But if you're a road warrior, if you're somebody that uh, spends a lot of time away from a charger, um, you can pick up spare batteries and you can have, uh, a, you know, you can swap your batteries, which I think is a big plus. So there's a lot of newer consumer grade computers that just aren't doing this anymore. Another thing that I appreciate, appreciate about this laptop, they're not in ideal locations. But you have a charge LED. It's amber when um, it's charging, white when it's charged. On this side of the laptop, you have a power light and a um, hard drive uh, indicator. So I know a lot. A lot of people are like, "Oh, those aren't necessary anymore." Maybe it's just because I'm old school, but I, I do appreciate the lights. Um, just letting you know what the system is doing. Um, again, inside plastic. This is plastic. Everything's plastic. Um, the only keys you have, power up here, the mouse keys down here, the keyboard, as I said earlier, it's decent. It's okay. It's not the best, not the worst. It's it's adequate. I typed on this for about three hours, writing up some scripts, responding to some emails, things like that. Perfectly acceptable. On the uh, right-hand side, you just have a USB 2. Left-hand side, you have USB 2, uh, USB 3, HDMI. Gotta love having a, an actual Ethernet cable or Ethernet port uh, RJ45. And you have a VGA. So you got a decent amount of ports on this laptop. Um, very acceptable um, for a $200 laptop. Uh, very happy, as I said earlier, with this. Um, as you can see, I've already got a little bit of a scratch in it um, just because I've been using it and uh, I'll be using a lot more for sure. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day and thank you again.
All right, so I wanted to follow up on my previous video. Um, I went ahead and picked up one of these uh, second hard drive caddies that goes into the CD-ROM slot. Um, I picked up on Amazon, it's like eight bucks, free shipping. And as you can tell, I've taken it apart, and it's fairly simple. Under this section right here, this is the plug for the uh, CD-ROM, and then it has an adapter that connects it for a hard drive. And I've taken it apart, taken that piece out, and voila! So I now have, in addition to the um, 32 gigs of onboard storage, I now have a 500 gig hard drive. Now, why 500 gig hard drive? Just because that's what I had laying around. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this sucker put all back together and uh, then do my actual review of the system. Alright, thanks for watching.